Marty, I think you're the first. Should we go ahead and start? Yeah. Are you waiting on people? Is anybody else coming? No, if they're not here, I'm not. Oh, waiting. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's the goat. He's the lamb. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, all right, well, first of all, thank you very much for letting me uh, come here again. I, I uh, have a, a little enclosure, a little packet for you guys to give you a little more information about where we're at with the golf course, what we're, we're doing. There's uh, three things with the opening letter. If you don't mind, I'd like to, I don't know if you guys can read, but I'd like to read that anyway because I'll probably mess up something if I just talk about it. And then also is some information that I gave last year, and then I wanted to give kind of an update with that. And then uh, you'll also see our course schedule, some highlights of that. And then each of you have a um, an addition at the end of the packet, which highlights uh, what I tried to do were some similar courses uh, that are compared to a, not necessarily a county our size, but a, a golf course our size. And some different things about it. Just so that you can get an idea about where we are. So, so with that, uh, thank you very much for taking the time to listen to our arguments about the benefits to the community through the proper funding of the golf owners. Your forethought and visionary thinking last year has helped the course remain operational and a viable destination opportunity for the county. This year continues to be a struggle economically in many areas of the county, but the golf course can continue to be an attraction for youth activities, business gatherings, fundraising events, prospective new residents, and professional benefits as well. We maintain that an operational budget needs to include county help. We continually fall $20,000 to $30,000 short per year for the purpose of updating equipment, chemicals, and special maintenance, such as aeration, fertilizer, and car packs. With your help, we hope to address these issues next year and continue to make Stafford County Country Club a top attraction in Stafford County. So, with that, uh, with that, I have a, a couple of items that I'll let you guys ask me some questions. But, um, first of all, I know Clayton has been there, but have you guys had the opportunity to get off in the, in the last year? Not the last year. Not the last year. I would really like to invite you, and I'd be happy to host you with that, just to show you that you know, some things that, that we have. I, I know you uh, wouldn't have been available uh, last weekend with Jubilee and all that, but the golf course was packed. So that was nice to see. Uh, I'd like to have you notice the schedule. And a couple things that are on that and on that schedule, I'm going to highlight a couple of dates for you uh, relating to what I just read in regards to the activities that are available out of the course that are being used. Uh, obviously, the St. John High School golf. Um, June 7th, the Stars Benefit, which helps out with our after-school program at Stafford. July 5th, a new tournament that we've added with the Elks Association out of Great Bend. Uh, they have they have been going to different golf courses, but they just they just found out they like Stafford the best, and so on. And with that, um, August 24th, Kansas Co-op again. It's uh, based out of Iuka, and then in the past they have. They have enjoyed going to different courses in the, in the county, but they uh, they did uh, Stafford works out the best for them. Um, September 6th, the Stafford Chamber of Commerce tournament, something that we've added in the last couple of years. Um, September 13th, the Odd Fellows tournament, again, where the Odd Fellows does such great work, great uh, giving work in the community and the uh, they use this as a kind of a day for their for their members to uh, celebrate. Um, September 20th is the breast cancer 
uh, golf tournament, and, and in between the 13th and 20th, that date is still to be added, but there'll be a high school cross country meet out there. It's tentatively scheduled for September 18th, but it's not on the schedule yet. Um, September 27th, the Mossy Oak is a uh, local real, real, real estate company here that uh, is hosting the tournament. And then October 18th, there's going to be an outdoor wedding. So what I wanted to point out from that tournament, or from this tournament schedule on the golf course usage, is how much we have tried to expand the use of the course. And you can see that it's being used by uh, members and non-members throughout the entire county. And it's a draw from as far away as Pratt with uh, Iuka and the Kansas Club to Great Bend with the Elks. So, and we plan on, on expanding that as much as possible also because we are trying to find every way possible of trying to uh, create more funds for the course. And at the same time, like I said in the, in the opening statement about we want to make this a destination place for people from anywhere from 20 minutes to an hour away. Um, we have had the opportunity to get some private donations to meet some specific needs of, of the course. And we are still still soliciting those. And uh, there's a lot of discussion going on with our board uh, about that and how they're to be used because uh, we have to come, somehow or another, we have to come up with that 20,000. Um, so, now my, I have a couple of questions for you guys. Uh, have you had the opportunity to visit some other courses or maybe even talk to some other municipalities or other counties on um, how they fund their golf courses or maybe even uh, why they choose to fund their golf courses? And, and so I would, I would like to urge you as commissioners to do that maybe and make phone calls to support. Maybe, I don't know, do you guys ever get together with the state county commissioners and have discussions? But I, I would like to urge you to ask those questions and, and see if uh, see how that's benefited uh, them in their case. So I, I uh, why don't we have the Pretty Prairie Golf Course uh, little uh, picture. Why don't we have the Elkhart Golf Course and why don't we have the Smith Center one? I thought maybe uh, it cost me money to print all these up all the time. So I, <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, sorry, I didn't give you one. <laughs> I guess I could have found them. Uh, two of those are, are municipal courses, so the city comes in. And then one of them, Elkhart, is funded by the county. Uh, I could have used Greensburg also since it's a county one. But uh, I have asked those courses how they are funded and why they are funded. And the, the how is essentially uh, anywhere from 65 to 80 percent is funded by the city or county or taking care of those funds. The rest is through green fees, usage of the course, etc. And then I ask why do the uh, cities or the counties choose to fund the golf course? And the best answer I, I uh, got was from Elkhart. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Elkhart. They're, they have a uh, medical center there and four doctors. And they said in order for them to attract the uh, young doctors and their families and to attract new residents, they had to have a selling point. And they chose, and they said, to get professionals, such as doctors mm -hmm. and hospital staff, because you wouldn't want to go. They said that was the best way that they could attract and maintain or retain professionals in their community. And so that's one reason, or the biggest reason, they chose to do that. Um, the municipalities, also, 
echoed those statements, but they they were more concerned with the recreational opportunities for that. So, with those, I, I you know, I would uh, I would just like to encourage you guys to one come out and visit us sometime. Second, ask some of the other counties to uh, what their feelings are, and third, really really try to to notice what we're trying to do because we what we've tried to do in the last year is meet uh, some of your concerns and uh, some of your wishes about the course. Um, you know, next week we're holding our, our youth clinic uh, helped out by uh, uh, Stafford Rec Center and Clint Kinman and, and a couple of his kids are going to help me. And it's, it's kind of an experiment. We're going to see how how, how it works to see if we can expand that to some of the uh, youth golf days in, in the future. So now that I've kind of monopolized you guys for, for a little bit, made some statements, I'd, be, I'd welcome any questions or concerns that you guys have. Yeah. Um, I'm curious Carolyn, have you talked to Carolyn then? Yes. She approached us or made comment in one of our meetings about Walk path grants that were available, or some walk path bill she was working on. I wondered if that could be incorporated into your, since they use it as a cross country deal, that that's something you could intermingle together or not. I don't know. I, I know that, uh, that normally golf courses don't want walkers out there. During operation, well, so yeah, because of hazardous, well, I mean, hazardous yeah, duty. yeah, but I mean, if there's certain times of the day, or if you could outlaw it somehow, or it's a good idea. I you mean, mean, you use the cart pass as a walk path, well, walk or, path or, or add an outside area right. around. I know that that Heston uses part of the golf course for a walk path, and. There are signs on the tee box saying, part of that area? <laughs> Watch for walkers. Yeah. It's kind of odd. I mean, it's a golf course. Well, I was just yeah. thinking if you, I mean, trying to think outside the box, if you know, you're trying to generate more money and if you can incorporate this grant into operations or maintenance of the cart paths, so maybe that's a different approach to take. I don't know. I will. Uh, That's I may talk. I may talk to her. We're talking. That's all. And, and, and you know, we've discussed this before, but I think the success of a golf course is is having a good youth program. You know, I know you know, St. John uses it, Stafford a little bit, Maxville, I don't think. But if somehow we could get, you know, the rec commissions from the three cities to participate in the junior golf week or whatever, just to get kids interested in golf rather than sitting in front of the Xboxes and so on and so forth. Well, we're, we're, we're trying really hard to uh, work with the rec, rec commissions. We haven't had a lot of success from all three for one reason or another. Uh, we hope we hope to address some of those issues also. Yeah. But, uh, that, uh, you know, Maxwell has kind of got some young blood in their recreation program that is pretty good, is leaning very aggressively towards you know, more activities and more things going on. And so, you know, that might be uh, communication with them might be viable. For and so is Chris. Hogan. Yeah, she's still involved. Uh, they've just got a, a whole new young board. I mean, they're pretty aggressive, so and they want things yeah. to happen. So, yeah. I, mean, I, have, uh, I have talked to one of the board members in the yeah. golf course. So. How's the use of the total use here? Green fees compared to this last year or the year before? Um, it's about the same. Okay. Yeah, we have a monthly meeting and we compare that. Uh, I, I would say April was such a 
strange month due to weather, mm -hmm. that obviously that affects it. Um, May started out slow, but definitely has picked up now. And if we, you know, if we continue to have some good golfing weather, we're going to continue to have a, a better green for this year. So, uh, but pretty much even our membership right now is pretty comparable to last year. We're still offering the two, the half price for the membership um, because, again, through private donation, uh, uh, we get uh, if somebody opens up a new membership, a single or family membership, then this person would pay the balance. So we are it's, we are soliciting um, those donations and funds from other areas. And believe me, we appreciate so much what, uh, what you folks did for us last year as we get these, those payments quarterly this year. That is definitely helped. And uh, so we, we plan on being operational throughout the, throughout the golfing season. Uh, after that, we'll get more, make some more hard decisions. Whatever your green fees now? $15 you can play all day. What's the membership? Any anywhere well, uh, now with the uh, new members, they can get in there for three hundred twenty-five dollars, uh, and then they can play any time of the year all day. It's a great deal. Sunrise to sunset. <laughs> That's a lot of fun to be out there. Even that. You got a glowing ball. That's right. <laughs> some and some people that. I thought people. <laughs> you get those little things out there. <laughs> I, I, honestly, the earliest I've been out there golf, I started at 7 30. And sometimes I'll go out there and golf for an hour and then I'll go do my oil well stuff. It's a nice little break. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, well, are there any other any questions that I could ask? Because I know you guys are getting into the, the budgeting time and how, how to do that. I'm just really. Like to encourage you to, to to continue to help us out uh, because we are we're trying to make a, make it work. Obviously, I am trying to make it work for selfish reasons. That's why I'm on the board up there but because I want to play that. Um, I can't play basketball anymore. <laughs> I'm not going to play softball. I'm going to do that. And I can't play golf very well either. <laughs> yeah. And I can't handle bowling. It's not the bowling alley. Is it bowling? Yes. I was actually shocked after we did this last year. I had several people approach me that I didn't think they liked it. And they actually thought it was okay to help yeah. support the golf course that I was coming from. Oh, I, don't, I realize you guys get asked about funding a lot of areas, but really, when you think about it, the you know, golf course is an attraction, and I don't, and I'm not, I, I'm not wanting to say why us over someone else. However, the, a lot of the others aren't attractions, and they aren't being used as much as. Yeah. Uh, there are some uh, some definite benefits to it. But I, I would like, uh, again, I'd like to end this by echoing what Elkhart says. They found that they need to be paid in a track professionals. Some of the oddities of the golf, of the golf course is that uh, we do get, there are a few people that are at the RV park that come down. And then the other day, I saw a school bus coming out, going on the 50. And I come to find out it was the school bus driver. He had brought the track team in someplace. <laughs> and was so, so he'd bail out and, and he'd go <laughs> play golf. <laughs> but it's happened more than once, I guess. Really he said, What else am I going to do? I'm sitting in either play golf or sitting in the bus all day. Yeah, it was school. And uh, the first one guys come over and they came here in town when they were at their high school. It was Ralph. Yeah. So, yeah.
All right. We're great. Appreciate you guys again. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark, for helping us out. Yep. Have some tough decisions. If you need any uh, further help on, on where you'd uh, like to disperse some funds, let me know. I'll be happy to. Everybody wants to comment. I'll be happy to. Thank you, guys. Thank Have a good day. Thanks, dude. Yeah. Because you and I are going to be working on that Elks thing. I think. We are? Yeah, I told him DJ. Uh, I helped the chicks. I didn't know and I was said, involved in oh, that. Oh, yeah, he said, you're going to run it. Oh, oh, he did. And he said, don't she stress doesn't her need out, your help. Oh. <laughs> don't stress her out. <laughs> yeah. I will not be involved. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> Never forget. Well, Marty was in here, but he just Did we lose Amy? Oh, she was. She was in the hallway. Okay. Morning, Carl. Morning. Morning, Shane. How are you? Are you good? Good. Carl. These two will be one of the at some point in time, not today. Oh, I like the purple. Oh, yeah. Blue blue shirts. Oh, blue shirt. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Man, we didn't get the memo. <laughs> we didn't get the memo today, you know. Here you go, Clayton. Um, well, the board met uh, the 1st of April, and uh, as you know, we've got a nine member board that goes through the budget and works through this with us, and uh, this is what they came up with. Um, we did have an increase of about six thousand dollars, which equaled out to about a four percent increase over last year. Um, and we do appreciate Kurt. He came to our uh, April meeting there, and uh, we were able to go through as a board with him. We do appreciate that. And Shane was there last year, so I guess we'll see Clayton next year. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, like I said, that's where we stand. The biggest I I was there. <laughs> Our biggest increases were um, in the telephone um, because Amy and I use our cell phones a lot and with the technology we have, with the smartphone, the thing, the data packages. We haven't been reimbursed for any of that, so we kind of approached that. So there was an increase there of about $1,200 uh, for um, as part of that, like I said, or $6,000. Um, we also did increase our uh, educational program support, that miscellaneous line item, increased it about $500, which um, because we've been doing a lot more youth programs, the facility we've got has just worked out so great for us. We've been able to do a lot of school programs with the kids. We've had an after school program this last year that Amy's really taken the lead on. And uh, we've got every Wednesday school kids coming in and doing activities with them. Um, but also going to the other school districts and doing things too. But the, like I say, with, because of that, doing more of those programs, it has cost some more things too. And then we did uh, our subsistence. And now the subsistence line item, that is where some of the motels and the meals and things were out of town, and also most of the fuel doesn't come out of there. We did increase that at another $500 also. And then in the salary line item, we finally have full staff again with our secretary and getting her going. And so we. Uh, did increase that, and that would be about a 2% increase in that line item over last year in the salary item. Do you guys have any questions or thoughts, concerns, or anything we can... Can we know with everything else going on, we can't make a decision now, but, but just if you have any questions, feel free. And, I don't know. You pretty well covered it, I think. And Carl think was our board chair. We talked a little bit about it the other night when Kurt was there about we had didn't get an increase there for. Uh, yeah, we had last until year. Until last year. About 2011 or 2010 to 2011, 12. Yeah. I think it was. Or like some, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, was we kept about three year period or so. Yeah. And then we did get, let's say, an increase last year. One thing, too, we're looking at this year probably having to uh, come up with is our copier. 
and we've taken. I know, I know you guys. That's kind of sore subject. Well, we've been reading. We've been reading the minutes. Yeah, we've been reading the minutes. Yeah, we've been reading the minutes. But he's got a lot better deal than you. Tires. We do have some copiers. Tires. Favorite subject. Well, hopefully we'll get on tires unless we're ruining something. Um, but we do have a, um, our copier is actually a 2001 model, and so we've got a lot of goodie out of it. Um, the, the copier place has not pushed a shed on it, but they're probably getting close because we're starting to spend more time with their service tech, and we've got a service plan on it, which is about the only way you can own a copier. And uh, so like I say, we, we aren't spending as much time with them as their spouses yet, but we did on the last <laughs> one before, <laughs> but hopefully... But we are probably going to have to look at replacing it, and when we do, it will be one that's color, because this one's not color, it's not network in. Like I say, it's a 01 model, so I uh, got a December 01. Um, so like I say, we, we'll have it where it's linked in to our computer, so we can print straight to it and do some of that things with it also. Um, and the bid on it was a little under $7,000. But like I say, we'll be doing that. Um, to be able to. Yeah, and we will. We do happen to be able to put a little bit of money away the last several years, and that's one thing the board has really worked hard on with the budgeting. Is um, I think well, you got maybe all new since we did that. Um, our van we had that we replaced in '09 was like an '89 model. Didn't have a lot of miles on it as far as years those years, but it was getting where the electronics were all going out. You'd have to slap the dash every now and then. It's just bummer or It didn't have any hubcaps either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we decided we could eat hubcaps over there. Not a lot of miles, not a lot of hubcaps. But, so, but the board hadn't really, at that time, hadn't budgeted a way to keep, save money to replace it. So we were, since we were, did get the new one, the board hasn't been able to put a little bit of money away. And we think we do have the money for that. So it would we'll probably, like I said, we got this one in 09, and so probably next year or so, looking, trading it or getting rid of while there's still some value in it. If it hits 100000 um, so we think we do have, and that's where that equipment reserve, that 21000 that is uh, money we actually have that they'll be able to put toward a vehicle. So hopefully we'll be able to do that without it having to increase anything because of that. And at the end of this year, we should be able to put some more money away from it and go to the plan to add to that. So. The idea behind that was just so we didn't have to come to you and say, will you buy us a new vehicle, you know? Yeah, Save over time. Yeah, and that's one thing the board, their approach is, and maybe I don't know what your theory is on things, but asking for a little bit at a time is we think probably a little easier for you to handle than coming in and saying, hey, we need $20,000 now. Two, 3000 here is probably a lot easier every year to handle than a lump sum. <laughs> but like I said, that's kind of what we're, our thought process is on this. It may not be yours, but I mean, that's fine too. But that's just why we're doing some things we do. Well, and particularly in mid-year, you know, we don't have them because yeah. it's only been budgeted. So. Yeah. And we have a place say that our vehicles in 08, we got it in 09 with the program vehicle, and we haven't really had any trouble with it. I mean, it's really been a good vehicle for us. I haven't had to put any money into it to speak of it. There's some window regulators where they don't want to go up and down. I usually have things when I'm driving. <laughs> yeah, at 30 degrees and an hour from home. <laughs> <laughs> but we have that's been really the only expense other than tires and maintenance on it. So we've been very fortunate with it um, so far. But we also don't want to run to the point that it doesn't make one diamonds to park. You know how that goes. It gets to a point where you can't hardly afford to own it either. How was the budget last year? The total budget, um, you mean total dollar wise? Yes. Um, the total budget last year was 183161 And that line item, they said there was a, like a $5,800 difference. Um, you gave us 138700 And that adds up to like a $6,037 increase. So we're increasing what we're asking for this year. And that's a 4.35% over last year's numbers. And 
looking at total receipts down below where it says 229516 That is with our non-appropriated funds and that equipment reserve. And those are things that are outside of the budget that we have, like when we do soil tests and samples and things like that, pro educational programs. So that, like I say, the actual amount that's in the budget is 188425 and that other 20000 is basically just a paper figure that allows us to spend up to 20000 if we have 20000 in that account. And like I say, the equipment reserve account, we actually do have that 21000 there, but it's, like I say, step back for a vehicle replacement there. And last year's budget, we actually came in, okay, oh, okay I think I don't have 214 yet, which I mean, 2014 budget, the 2013 budget, we were actually, let's say, with the money we saved and put away, we were at like 164 is what we actually spent that year, 164,600. So hopefully it will suit you. We'll know. Yeah. 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 Well, we appreciate it. Yeah. yeah, and if you have any questions, like I say, feel free to ask. Very good. Thank, Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Oh, one thing, too, just to mention to you, we are going to get a summer intern. It's being paid for by uh, outside money from uh, working with four other counties, with Barton, Pawnee, Edwards, and Stafford, there'll be two interns um, trying to work with Hispanic families. With uh, ILS, uh, Wolf Beatlot, and they're actually uh, coming up with the money to do this. So we will, you will be seeing um, some other faces in the office this summer. So hopefully it'll be reaching first generation 4 as is what it's called. So. Or first generation families. Or families, yes. Uh, yeah. The other, the other subject I was thinking about about districting. Any <laughs> speaking of districting, yeah. um, <laughs> is it going to be area, mandated or is it going to be voluntary? Or is I don't think they can mandate it, but I think they can squeeze hard enough that someday it's just going to happen. Right now, our area director, Phil Slaughter, doesn't do any involved in that. Uh, he is retiring. So they, instead of hiring a new area director, the area staff that we have in Garden City will fall under the northeast area, the area director, and then the area director from southeast is going to have everything from Missouri to Colorado. Oh I don't know what the South, I mean the southern part so, of the Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, the area southern area. tier, with uh, Shed Grounds, right? Well, we're the northern end of the south central area. So from there to Oklahoma, all the way to Colorado. They'll be covering all those counties. Um, so the southwest part of the state is the only area that has not had any districts. There are no districts in southwest right now. Right? The other three quarters of the state have had districts. There's 15 districts They're pushing in 50 it. counties. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know. I'd say the advantages are that you may, may be some cost saving because you're going to eliminate some staff. Um, you also we, may eliminate uh, service. We wouldn't in our office. No, we should, well, I don't in, think. it just in the county or in the area, like say, they, if you're in a two or three county, okay. however many counties you're in, you can have up to that many agents. So if we went into, it, like say, Edwards, Kiowa, Pratt, just an example, that'd be six count or four counties, you'd have eight agents. The chance are you're not going to have all eight of those filled. That they may be nice. a first, but then as attrition goes, there'd be a staffing plan. You may have one do four age, you may have one do that. Facts, or maybe two do facts and two do ag, one do livestock, one do crops, and they're able to specialize better. Um, but like I say, there'd probably be some cost savings there and salaries. So after people start leaving, you may not hire their degree. Initially, probably wouldn't be. Maybe Here's be. my thought on this thinking: is they're really pushing it for our area, and my only thought is that we at least should get into it so we can pick and choose who we want to district Be proactive with. instead of oh, yeah. okay. instead well, of yeah. waiting and being forced to go with someone that doesn't work for mm -hmm. us. So, and so, so I am a little nervous about it. <laughs> well, that, that was my question is, is who starts the dialogue? Is it extension or is it the county? Extension or? starts. Uh, the way it kind of goes is 
once some counties kind of start talking like the boards, the boards will start talking with other counties, then it has to go to commissioners. And there's a resolution that has to be signed and there's, okay, is it 30 or 60? There's either a 30 or 60 day period. If nobody comes in and then complains about it, then it just goes in. If they do, then it has to go on an election. Is it by petition? By petition, yeah, petition, yeah. And if there's a petition filed, then you have to go in and do a county election for it. And there was a big push last year. Uh, one of the senators from Miami, Lynn County, was pushing because with the district, it, I, I don't know if it's good or bad. I mean, from your standpoint, it's quite different than ours. It would be, then our board would be made up of however many counties. It would be three, no, four. Four uh, board members from each of those counties would make up the board. And they would be elected just at a, like a school board election on the general election time. Mm -hmm. They would be elected that way. But they also are their own taxing authority, too. So they would come out from under you guys. Some commissioners like that. Some commissioners don't. It's kind of a half a dozen one and six the other how it works. It's one of those things you don't have to worry about the budget anymore. And I think a lot of people are concerned that, oh, you get a board out here, they'll run rampant, raise everything. Well, they're still taxpayers. And most of them, and they aren't going to raise their, they don't want to raise their own taxes too bad. Um, so I don't think most counties have seen that. But there was a senator in Lynn County this past year put on the uh, a bill, and it never came, it came out of committee, but it never hit the floor to take the taxing authority away and put it back to the commissioners. So if we were in a district, we'd have to, with uh, four other, three or four other counties, you'd have to go to each commissioner, or set of commissioners to get your budget. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I could be a problem. Yeah. I could get a bit mess. Yeah. And most of the commissioners that are in the district were all for it. I mean, not for that. They were, they liked the district because they don't have to deal with it. And they understand that these are elected officials. They don't like raising their taxes, so it's not a big, a big concern. Um, but I think, I think what happened in Lynn County, they, were just, they just voted to go into a district, and one of their members didn't like the idea that they were going into a district, so that's when they approached their senator and got her all fired up, and she wrote this bill and committee, and then it did come out of committee, but it didn't. At any rate, K-State administrators were... Yeah, they were pretty nervous about it. <laughs> about but they had a lot of commissioners come in that are in districts, and board members and others who have been in districts and involved with it, uh, talk to these senators and things, and most of them are all very favorable, but they like the way it works. It's been good, so. I, Does that answer your question at all? It really kind of, we're not it's, sure. It's how, probably coming, yeah. is it tomorrow? Probably not, but it's probably something we really are going to need to look at. If we want to control our own destiny, I mean, it's one of those things that you don't want to be last in line. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to be first, but you don't want to be last either. And right now, we're definitely not first. So. Yeah. And I don't, you know. Well, I think it's just something you need to be proactive and being able, like you said earlier, to do a little picking and choosing mm -hmm. and say, okay, we've, we've established the groundwork. You know, is it, and there's for some example, counties that, Edwards, Pratt, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And there's some counties, I mean, we've talked about, and, um, that I'm just not really too interesting just because of the size of getting gobbled up and lost. To, and I, but with you each having your board having four members on that board from your own county, that's probably not going to happen as much as long as they're strong members and supportive and are willing to speak. I mean, it's not going to be that the Renos, the Bartons, or Sedgwick are going to take you over mm -hmm. and all the programs are going to be there and not here. Uh, just an example, I mean, we wouldn't be the second county too far away. Just an example, that's a big county that everybody's concerned with, just swollen up. But, so I mean, that's probably not going to happen, and it hasn't happened, I don't think, in most places. The 4 H program is probably going to be the biggest issue in the district. Um, this how you're going to make it work. Do you keep, because most counties keep their own county fairs, which is probably good. They have their own 4 H days, everything. But, like Saline County and Ottawa County went together, and I think they have just one fair. They basically said, we're doing everything together. And that, I, mean, I don't know how it's working. I haven't heard any rumbling, so it must not be too bad. But, but I think the keeping your own county economy, it's kind of nice to have your own fair. But I think there are some I mean, advantages, like our fair and like Edwards County, if you want with them. They're both smaller fairs. You could buy them, probably make one pretty decent. Thing. Right. The thing is where you have it. 
I'm not sure I see where the efficiency or the savings is, though, as long as you keep the number of agents you have now, and if you do cut back, then you're going to lose service. So I'm, I'm not so I'm not no, sold agree. on no, this yet, really. Uh, yeah, I, I think the biggest saving probably is the state level, because if you lose, because if you do downsize, they're not putting their portion into the mix for that. Well, I think that's the deal. It benefits the upper, you know, it, it benefits the state, but it doesn't necessarily benefit us. Yeah. But and then, I mean, that's the way things kind of work a lot of times. And when districts were first started, they talked about agents being more satisfied because they're able to specialize more. But they're just as much turnover in a district as there is in a greater yeah. county. So I don't know if that's true or not. Yeah, I will say the last letter we received from Daryl Buholtz was probably the strongest worded letter towards districting that we've had uh, ever. And he was pretty persistent. <clears throat> and I talked to him a couple of weeks ago. And I know uh, probably two or three years, was it two or three years ago they sent out the letter saying that they wanted everybody in the district by 2015. And it was, well, we didn't work that quite right. We wanted everybody who wanted in the district by 2015. But that would be here pretty quick. And we're still, like I said, there's, I think, 15 districts and Right at 50 counties, the districts now 47, 48. So, what is there already in? Do they have a four member board from each county? That I think it's four, is that correct? Three or four. I've never heard of that. Yeah, it's three or four from each of the counties. They're equally represented yeah. within the district. Mm -hmm. That way, you don't have, uh, let's say, one county loading it up. It always sounded to me like what, what, you know, when that started, what worked good with counties just had one agent counties and they didn't have the expertise to do all the, you know, cover 4-H and AG and everything. Well, that was kind of a good deal. You go with a county that, you know, they could share, <clears throat> but, you know, where we've already kind of providing the services that, yeah. that we need, I don't, I mean, of course, if we're forced to do it, we're forced to do it. And I, I agree the proactive deal is better than being pulled along. But, and I will say I, all the southwest counties have been financially um, better off than a lot of the counties of the district up to this point. A lot of them have district due to financial decline mm -hmm. and um, and those that were really, really needing um, some help were the first to district. And so we've been able to hold off districting in our area just because we're better than anyone else. <laughs> No, that was good. Yeah, probably, one, <laughs> really? and probably one of the best, biggest districts as far as population-wise and money-wise is in the southeast area. Uh, Crawford, Labette, and Montgomery County. So you're looking at Coffeyville, Independence, Pittsburgh, Parsons. Uh, they district, and they, they wanted to be proactive. It wasn't a money issue for them. They just wanted, they, they thought they saw the writing on the wall and they wanted to control their own destiny. And none of them were really in financial issues. It, and that's why they went into a district was to be proactive. Yeah. Are you sorry you asked? No. <laughs> okay. Like I say, when this first law came around, I really dragged my feet on. I guess I'm a little more in favor of it. I think writing on walls coming up probably. And as we talk to those that are in districts, they're they're not hating it. Um, I think at the beginning it was pretty rough because it, it was it was new. But the the districts that have formed within the last year or two, they're all saying it's working out really well. Um, but but not I don't, I don't know if that's always the case, but that's what we're hearing. So that kind of helps ease our uh, our worries about it a little bit too, is when you hear good things from other districts. Maybe it's not so scary. It is something new and different, and I think it is coming. I can see it working use here, being proactive and forced together. Now you have to do it. Yeah, yeah. There's, I mean, there's, there's some counties <laughs> there be some there's some county you may not want to go with that. <laughs> yeah. Just because, I mean, listen to the radio and you hear some of the things that are in their commissioner methods and things like that. Oh, we don't Luckily, you guys are on the radio, so you're <laughs> Now, after talking to him, I just have to think that shouldn't keep this on the back burner. No. Right. And I, you know, in fact, Amy and I just had this conversation yesterday about the yeah. And in, with the counties we're kind of working with on a regular basis anyway, <coughs> Edwards and Pratt um, would probably be our first choices, you know, but I'm not real sure 
Pratt's ready to do anything, but with Edwards and us being about the same size, and, um, it, it, and we really like the agents that are over there, we get along and out. Um, but I can see, you know, like I said, when, when we talk about this, we can see like Kyle or Pratt making a four or even, I don't know, that's, that's the thing too, I don't know how big you can get or how is manageable. Because we there's some two counties, and I'm not sure how advantageous a two county district is, but it is four or six too many. And, you know, I've had that discussion too, I don't know. Yeah. It just depends on the area you cover. The way things go, if you if you did two counties, it probably wouldn't be long, and they'd be wanting to put two or yeah. no, they'd then merge those districts. Yeah, and they'd gain, you make them at several places, like Post Rock District, which was Lincoln County, Mitchell County, started in '91 or '92, about that time period, and they were first district. They stayed the only district for several years, and now there's four or five counties in that. They've added to it. They just picked up like Osborne, and, and there's some county that have skipped the county. And they've just yeah, the middle county out. Because no, Smith good. County was one of those. They were basically landlocked. Smith County <laughs> had Nebraska on one side. <laughs> but then they are in the district now. They joined, well, I think they joined post Yeah. Yeah. So, they so I don't want to be like, you know, I don't want every county around us to district and then us not be in the district. And then we get swallowed up. And sure. my, yeah, yeah. my home county is like that, Cherokee County. Like, say, the county's around this district. It's in that southeast corner and it's landlocked, you know. So. I don't know what you're ready to do. There's a few that are definitely like that. <laughs> and then there for a while there was a, a Trigo County and Logan County. And they skipped. What county did they skip? There's one in between that they skipped. Right. So, no? No. Go. Go. Oh, yeah. Go. 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 Yeah, because it was Joaquin, Trigo and Logan. They formed a district here a few years ago and they skipped Go. Because Go. Fun. Go was all it was all set to go into it, and then at the last minute somebody voted no or something happened, and so but now they are in that district. But that yeah. doesn't look very efficient to have a county between two counties yeah. working together. That yeah, yeah that would be a mess. Sounds wrong. Yeah. yeah, but like I said, it's the closest district we have is uh, Ness, Lane, and Rush County. That's our closest district. But Ellsworth and Russell. Just went into a district this past year, or this last year, yeah, last year. Yeah. So they're just now in the district. Uh, that's one of the newest ones. Rice isn't there, No, Rice isn't. Um, yeah, like I say, there's nothing around here. Just Ellsworth and Russell, I guess, would be, those would be two of our closest ones. Lincoln all the way together. And we got Lincoln, Mitchell, Osborne. Then you have it's Hodgman amazing. County, who's dying to district with someone, and nobody will district with them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so that's kind of weird, too. Yeah. For some of the big populated counties, are they big enough that they don't necessarily need to district? Or? I think a lot of it is. The finances have been good enough, and they just, a lot of that. But like I say, you're looking at these three, Crawford, Labette, those are probably the biggest, some of the biggest populated counties in the mm -hmm. good district. And it wasn't really a money issue, they just wanted to control their own destiny. All right. All right, thank you. See you. Bye.
questions. So what are we going to do once the mortgage hmm. fee goes away? Well, we've got four years until it completely goes away and then it'll be gone, but those four years, the filing fees are going to go up each year. I still don't think it's going to compensate for the loss. I really don't because we have oil and gas companies that, you know, that are huge and out-of-state companies that don't care about the mortgage tax. They pay it. That would be a question. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what we're going to do. We're going to have, we're going to have a loss as an income and a nightmare switching over the filing fees and the software and everything. So, and then we can't get people to send us the right fees as it is now. And they've been the same for, gosh, probably going on 20 years. And now we've been changing every four years. <laughs> So yeah, I, I don't know what we're going to do. I think down the you know road maybe we'll be able to tell a little bit more how much of a hit it's going to be compared to you know once we just get the filing fees in place and everything. And, but you know, like last week I took in probably at least fifteen hundred dollars in that mortgage tax. That was local money. That, that money just goes into the general mm -hmm. fund anyway. So mm -hmm. it's going to yeah. not just affect your office. Right. It's, it's, it's it's, it was, it was put in place back in the, whatever, 1925 or whatever, as a source of revenue, for operating revenue for, for the offices. And then the Heritage Trust Fund, of course, came about. Still going to get its percentage, and now the clerks are going to get a tech fee, and the treasurers are going to get a tech fee. And heritage, well, that was what a quarter of a percent. It, it, it was, was one it was minute, huh? it was Yeah, it's minute. minute, but yeah, it's. Did they lose that in the new bill? No, they're still going to get it, but there's a cap on it. I think. If I remember right. There's so many changes. Yeah, I think they tried to keep it. Yeah, they still have it, but there's a cap, I believe. So, I don't know. It seems like they have a mess with it. I mean, it really didn't yeah. change well, a lot. It, it wasn't mess. broken. So I know. No, it wasn't least. broken. And, and like the tech clerks and the treasurer's tech fees, um, they didn't even ask for them. Um, who was it that did that? I can't remember what senator. Um, threw that in there to try to get the clerks and the treasurers on board with the bill. <laughs> like, hey, we're going to give you something, so you need to get on board with this. And they didn't even ask for it, nor do they know what they're going to do with it. <laughs> hmm. That was a bad thing, was that the figures that the senators had to vote on were not really accurate. No, they didn't get them from us. Yeah. Yeah, not, as far as I know, not one single registered deed was contacted for their figures. Uh -huh. So how they come up with it? They, just they them up. took them off the state's website, PVD's website, uh -huh. um, for, um, well, tech fees. They based them off of what tech fees we took in. And we don't know how they came up with it. I mean, <laughs> some kind of math I don't understand, which I don't understand much math. It's so. <laughs> I don't foresee any big things coming up in my office, any big expenses coming up. My copy machine's good, computers are all updated. Working good, um, you know. Luckily, my tech fund will pay for my my people work contracts with the software company and stuff like that. So, and 
and the software company assured us that we aren't going to have to pay extra for this new change in the fees. But I don't know how they're going to do that. They're going to have to have a fee set by like January 1st. They're going to have to update every client's computer's software in the state somehow overnight. Yes. <laughs> Magically. <Yeah. laughs> I wouldn't understand that either. Data breach. Yeah. Probably this year than ever. Um, when pick back up. We have a slow spell, but Probably. it's picked back up. What? To you, that's what? That's the people. Oh, I just don't see the so long back. Here's a word like that. Oh, Except no. No, um, no, there for a while it was really slow, um, and then the last few weeks it's picked back up. We aren't having, we still get the occasional out of state researcher coming up and doing some stuff, and I know I haven't, I had a person call the other day and I'll say they were coming up and put on my thing. I've been to be here for a while, but, but we are still filing a lot of leases. My guess on that filing page is what's going to happen is the number of pages in the documents is going to increase. What used, what we used to like a standard mortgage was about 15 pages. St. John National had like about 15 page mortgage. It's probably going to increase to about 10. Say copy. We have, I have seminar next week, our annual conference, and we have a, a counselor coming in to discuss our options on how to deal with the bill. Uh, counselor? Huh? Counselor? No, it's probably me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a county. Somebody's it's county. I'm guessing it's Sedgwick <laughs> counties. Probably. Um, Thank you uh, that they're gonna, we have a lot of questions, like if we can make, pass a resolution to get around some of this stuff or anything like that. I don't think we can, but just there are some things out there. Yeah. For the filing fee? Um, well, <coughs> maybe. And then that, the, the reducing the mortgage fees, the, the, the problem we're going to have really around here is there's a cap, $75,000. Like, and then it has to be agriculture land, but not uh, single family residence. Well, a lot of people mortgage their home and their quarter ground together. together. So we have a lot of issues we're going to have to figure out.
like a few so I just catch first. So, well, yeah. to last. And then we do a lot of um, people going back and forth to Mexico yeah. a lot. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Yeah, passport to go to <laughs> Thank you. All right, you're welcome. Any more questions? Thank you. Easy. All right. <laughs> Thanks. Grab that some more filing fees. All right. We got about 16 leases in today. I'll make a motion to approve the notes from May 21. I'll second it. Motion and second to approve the minutes from the May 21st meeting. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. You guys ready for us? We're ready yeah. for you. Okay. How is everybody doing today? Good. Good. Okay. How are you? Good. Good, Good. 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 Hi, Sabrina is our uh, oh, our court service officer. John Ezern, who's our court administrator, usually comes. John had some surgery and was not available today. He's in fact up in Kansas City, but uh, doing well. So we were just going to come down and go over our budget. Uh, basically, we are just requesting the exact the fifty-two thousand. You know, two years ago we've been and. and Two or three years before that, we'd asked like 62 and spent 45 to 52. And I think last year you, you went down from 62 to 52, and, uh, which is what we've been spending. So that was fine. Uh, Renee spent 51,000 last year, actual expenses for the year end in 2013. So. This year, she's estimated we may be down a little bit. I think it kind of depends on, you know, a lot of it is our criminal load, whether we have what, how many cases are being prosecuted, how many things are going on. So we are, think the 52 is something that is workable for us, but is something that we need right around that amount. Uh, and that, I think, anything else you want to add on that? or? Okay. I, I did want to point out here, like on page two, something that uh, Stafford County, you know, through revenues and court costs and different fees, we don't get all of that, but a lot of it goes to the state, but we do generate almost $13,000 that does go back into the county general fund. Uh, and Sabrina, I think some of your costs and fees that you guys have go back into the county funds through probation and stuff. So we just like to point that out that even though we're Using fifty-two thousand, we do generate. We as in the <laughs> system, <laughs> maybe criminals. I don't know. <laughs> that's and that's all. That's all collectible. <laughs> well, this is what we actually collect. Yeah, like your profit. Yeah, <laughs> profit. profit. That is all. That is what we've collected, and they do a pretty good job. I, I have looked around in our districts, compared to a lot of districts. Some people don't make much effort at all to collect stuff, and I think they stay on things yeah, pretty good. They try to get them if they're not, I mean, to get them on wage assignments or try to increase their reporting and get them into uh, some filling out job search forms and going to Kansas Works and those things before we have to go back to see the judge, but <laughs> we're, trying to, we're trying to get them motivated before we meet their right. help to motivate. <laughs> and we do send in to state a debt set off. We do do that. I know that right. in the auditor report they mm -hmm. mentioned something about it, but we do. Okay. Hey, but you just can't, if the money's not there, you just don't get it. Right. And we do send it to MSP for collections. Right. When we have someone just flat, well, they run out of avenues, we turn into a collection agency, which they have several other options. You know, they do a little more aggressive because they make money on what they collect. And they're, they're pretty good. But fortunately, we don't have to do as much of that. I think the debt set off, which is, you know, for child support, people can claim from the IRS tax returns. The state has started to work in that if there's court costs and stuff, that uh, they're, I'm not sure we're in full fledged go on it yet, but that they've passed some statutes that allow us to maybe collect on tax returns. If someone gets a refund, they'll withhold that money. 
to pay off their court costs and fines and stuff. That's what the goal is, I know, from the whole state, which would be an easy way to collect that. Uh, the, the line item things were, I think, Renee basically said pretty much all the same. I did want to go to page seven. John, the user and user goes through this district expense. This is an amount that is paid for by the five different counties. It's a, it's a hundred nine thousand dollar budget. It's for education and training and equipment rental, uh, telephone calls, travel for judges phone calls, like if I call Stafford County, you know, do I bill it to Barton, do I bill it to Stafford? And, and this is a, a shared expense that Barton funds up front and then you guys pay your percentage by population and I think mean, $8,700, uh, which is eight, based on the 2010 census, 8% of the total population of our five county district. Uh, we've kept that, you know, we, we've tried to keep that at, you know, at minimal and so. That, that also includes court services budget for court reporters also. Yeah, when they travel to different counties, uh, their travel expenses is kind of paid out of that, some of that out of there. Other than that, you know, we don't have a heck of a lot to, to add, just asking that, you know, if, if you, would I, I was looking on the page nine, it looks like the case filings are pretty consistent the last couple of years for Stafford County, 741 in 2012, 754 and 13. Of course, we don't have 14 done yet. It's amazing how close they stay. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> you know, it, it is. I, I think, you know, of course, that, 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 does, that includes traffic. Traffic, obviously, uh, is your majority. Yeah. <laughs> and in traffic cases, really, are not. Unless they're the DUI, they're not very difficult. And most people walk in and pay their speeding. Sometimes you've got your driving without a license or no insurance. Uh, half of those, some of those insurance people just didn't have their car with them. They'll walk in, even if get a ticket, those will be dismissed. But it still shows up as a filing. Right. So, yeah, a lot of them stay about the same. So, anything else, Sabrina, you'd like to state or add or report or? No, uh, Kirk Kennedy continues to come down here, um, generally three Mondays a month and some motion days. So, um, I told Judge Keeley um, we have like five juveniles now, which for a while we didn't have you know, very many, and now there's some, some juveniles that have came on, and uh, for us, there's going to be some changes. We're going to be getting trained on a risk needs assessment on juveniles that we're going to start sending people to this summer. So um, I, we have this kind of the same version on the adult side. So we learn more. It probably helps to have some better information up front. So he's been, he's been consistent, and uh, PSIs, we complete all those on felonies, um, uh, the pre-sentence investigation before the judges do the sentencing. You know, fortunate we still have drug issues down here, but we don't, even our whole district, we don't have a lot of violent murders, you know, stabbings. I mean, once in a while, something like that can occur. But, will create more of a cost for, for the county attorney's office and, and courts, but we live in a pretty good, pretty good place, right? <laughs> you know, comparatively speaking. <laughs> yeah. I suppose the one or two instances where it doesn't, then you, know, then you worry about it, but compared to Wichita and Cleveland, Kansas City, and those areas, we're pretty good. Just keep from migrating down from Barton County. Yeah, we do that. They, they seem to shift around. We, we, we want them to keep moving south. <laughs> Go down to Kingman. And, you know, yeah, those counties. But that is a little disturbing about the juvenile. I think what happened, and part, I asked her about that. She said there were some juveniles that got that were doing some burglaries. Uh, I mean, eight, nine, 17 year old, I believe, that she thought. But I said, yeah, what, what is going on with that? And she said, well, she thought it was. There was like three or at least three of the four she thought were in one group that kind of caught them. Yeah, if so. they're, they're in a group, then they all, all get popped. So. So. That also includes the child and care cases. 
No, that, that, no. that's the, these are on probation. probation. Yeah, probation. probation. Yeah. 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 So. Other than that, we'd ask you to consider it and or, you know, prove that again and again. Renee does a nice job of not spending unless she needs it. Now, one thing I did want to support Elaine Green as retiring, effective June 30th. We have sent a letter after we got her uh, resignation letter. We sent a letter to Tika OJ, who is in charge of passing on to the Supreme Court, who then has to uh, authorize the position. Right now, in, in the court system or in the judicial branch, there's like 1,100 employees, and there's about 100 vacancies because of budget cuts. The state hasn't funded, the legislature hasn't funded this. And so they prioritize who should be filled or not. Obviously, a one-person office is not going to work. I mean, you know, she has fam family issues, vacation, sickness. Uh, so I wrote a letter in addition to just our normal letter. I wrote a letter to kind of the lady in charge, and I, I also wrote, called uh, one of the Supreme Court justices who is in charge of our area and said, you know, this is an area that is really high priority. We can't proceed with one person, so we need this bill. Now, now that was just last week, because we didn't get Elaine's official letter of resignation <coughs> until then. But I feel comfortable, hopeful, I guess, that they will allow us to rehire another person. To do that. And if, as soon as we get that information from Topeka, we'll get on it and get somebody hired. And hopefully they will allow that. What if they don't? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> well, what we would do on a temporary basis is we'd probably have someone from Bart County come down to help out. They would allow that. We would also request, uh, you know, maybe not opening in, to the public until 9 o'clock or something, give her an hour to get some of the paperwork done or some other people. You know, she she's in, you know, I'm speaking yourself, but she doesn't want to do that and put all the stress on herself and doesn't want to be tied. To a job, I think I, I, don't, I think they will. Uh, I, you know, I just said you know, this is really top priority in our district. And John Ezer and I have had a pretty good relationship with Topeka, and we we set out a priority list. You know, please fill this position first, and then this position. And we had Barton County was is down a position, but when I wrote to him, I said, you know, we'll get by in Barton. We have to have a position here. And if they don't, we'll let everybody know, or we'll let you know. And you know. <laughs> but like I said, uh, they probably weren't going to meet until this week. They only do it every month or two. And, and they've been pretty, pretty responsive to our requests. Uh, I don't know. I hate to even think about it if they don't. Yeah. yeah. So it is a possibility, but we we'll worry about the, it. Uh, monitoring system. Is it or? It's not in it. No, it's not uh, in it. There was a miscommunication between Randy and the. He's coming back next week. To make next Tuesday, right? right? It's Tuesday morning. We're getting, we're getting that remote, remote tool so we can have first appearances in Cattle County Sheriff's <laughs> offices. That's a great. Funded through the sheriff's office. I take. Well, oh, people around. You know, we. I think we've done a few hearings like that in Barton, where they've been in Reno County, juvenile stuff. I think it's something that is saved a lot of time in the sheriff's office, and especially those hearings that last like five minutes uh, or eight minutes, or they have got something like that. So I think that would be a good idea. And then if it you know, works, and hopefully we can maybe expand it to a couple other places. You know, first appearances. Well, it involves several trips. Uh, you know, it's not just oh, one. Right. You know, they yeah. got to load them all up and run them up here. Because we can have them in Barton County. We can have them in yeah. Barrett County. Yeah. In Kyle County. County. Yeah. yeah. That would be a great, great group. And then if you have anybody in juvenile detention, it's usually Reno County. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So the investment, the initial investment on this minimal compared to, compared to with the time and the, 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 the travel and gas and 
<laughs> just a couple of things. Couple of minutes. Minutes. One minute. Did get into an accident? Yeah. Wow, oh, that's good. I actually, in the Joe sheet, I could mention the same thing. So that'd be good. And that's good if you've got a judge, Judge Walters, and uh, Joe, who's kind of turning, who are willing to, to do that. Work with that. Work with that. You know. Some of the things on the, the audit report are. Is that things we can correct, or is that kind of out of our... Well, as I like say, I don't know why they mentioned not turning into collections, because we did. I've, I've, I've got a team. I don't know where that came from. And uh, as far as the outstanding checks, I've talked with Mel at OJA. I've got, I, I didn't get to some of them until after the first of the year this year, but... Um, the ones that I haven't done are in civil judgments, and they claim at OJA it is an accounting nightmare. Unless I can just kind of. And I'm sorry, I'm not as familiar with the audit. John would probably be more okay. working with on that. And I, I, I can print off copy and get it. Okay, to well, it. and what I'll do is we'll get, make sure, and I think he probably has been. Hopefully, working with Peter, whoever we need to, but we'll make sure that we address that. He, he's hoping to be back by the middle, okay. end of June at, at the latest. Oh, we just had our audit report last, last week. Okay. Yeah, like I said, we sent into collection agency, <laughs> we sent into state debt, so I'll, but you know, you can't get money out of the term. Right. Turn I mean, well, look. Look who you're trying to collect from. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't want to make that sound bad, but. Um, you know. So you just got the report here last? Well, yeah, last okay. Because I may that's why I haven't seen it, because maybe John has been gone for yeah. a couple of weeks, and he may not have seen it yet. I don't think I've ever seen it. Yeah, I don't think he's seen it. Okay, so we'll take a look at that. And, you know, I'm yeah, we'll sure to take a look at it. And, you know, start addressing those issues. Yeah. Things that's coming It wasn't about the major, it's just... Right, right. Things we have been working on and what they brought to our I, It's kind of like the fire department, you know. <laughs> Here's my, well, my wife. Was, she used to work at this high school. They'd been. They'd come in and, and do their fire department check. And they'd yeah. do nothing. They'd find something. Well, the next year, they, or they, they, they'd find something that they didn't address the year before just because I think they had to find something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I know the inspectors like and that some, And some of that... Outstanding yeah. receivable stuff is there's some big big dollar restitutions oh, yeah. that have been out there for years. I mean yeah. they've been there for years. Yeah, you're just not going to get them. You're just not going to get them. Okay, so I guess some of those like our absconders. Well, well, yeah, we'll look at that. Well, I mean, she did, sure. the all the make it seem simple, like a simple fix. Yeah, you know, and it, and we, you know, yeah. I think we we try and address those and yeah. we'll address people would just pay it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's all there is to it. Yeah. 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 We're done. Yeah. I mean, it's simple, but... <laughs> you have a zero balance. That's right. <laughs> well, okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Appreciate you. it, yeah. you guys. It's always been good to work with. And yeah. Good to see you guys. Good to see you. Yeah. How are you doing, sister? Looking good today. He didn't, he didn't get the. He didn't get the memo. He didn't get the blue. No, he didn't get blue today. You know. <laughs> There's a lot of memos Rob don't get. <laughs> <laughs> You're waiting on Tom, right? Yeah. Okay. I'll go ahead and get the budgets done. Wow. Let's get them all done. Okay. The first one is your budget. I left it the same as 14. Decreased a little bit because I only have one election next year, hopefully, unless we keep having special elections. But I've got enough built in there that we'll be okay. I have, um, I talked to the auditors, and we can create a, a reserve fund for like departments in county general where we would have one fund. And like, if, I, if the clerk put in $5,000, we would track that. That's my $5,000 just been for voting equipment that I'm probably going to have to replace in the next few years, or if the treasurer puts money in. I've got a resolution I want you to consider after we get done with this, establishing that fund for whoever wants to, like if the sheriff's office wants to transfer money in there. Because 
We've never had one for those of us in county general. The road has one, not just we, prior evenings. But um, I found out from other counties that this is how they've done it for other uh, other. Uh, that be similar to your capital outlays. Mm -hmm. so. Exactly. But like in my case, but in the if they're going to change all this voting use... equipment, I have to have money. Right. And so in my budget this year, or for next year, I put in a five thousand dollar transfer. Mm -hmm. But that still made my budget come in six thousand dollars less than last year. But like I said, only hopefully we'll have one election next year in April. And it's so that one transfer out, you can use for whatever you want in your office. Right. That's Right, capital purchases like um, a copier. How is your copier? Yeah. My copier is awesome. Or like I said, my big thing is voting equipment because they're. I mean, we still are paperless with our voting. I didn't buy it on the electronic machine, and it looks like now everybody's going to go back to paper. Yeah. But I'm like, I'm worried about my ballot scanner. I mean, those things are. So how does this different stuff. than say your line item four, uh, four five one three? Like well, How did, that's for I guess purposes that's, for that year. This is something that I can, it's kind of like the savings account. Because I won't, I won't buy election equipment until I need it. need it. But it'll be like my savings account for when I do have to make that $100,000 purchase to replace that savings account. So you would have a line? Uh, we would track it on the spreadsheet. Um, Register D's would have a line. Mm -hmm. Whoever but wants it'll all to, be under it's all in this one, one fund. Yes. And if I only have five thousand in in my pot, that's all I can spend. Right. I can't make a ten thousand dollar purchase if I only have five thousand. So the registered deeds would have under that. If she wants to line. transfer in treasure, I know Lisa's interested in it. I mean, you don't have to, but it's just right. a way to for us to have a reserve fund too. And the auditors looked at it and blessed it, and Joe was looked at it. So the, the residents. Okay. Do you have any other questions about my budget? Okay. Still pretty hot. Next one's courthouse general. Um, I left it the same. I think we pretty well cut it as far as we can. Um, and we run pretty tight on it, but we're okay. It just, you know, we have to budget in there if we have a huge building repair. That's the biggest thing. You know, if we have something go wrong, we have to be able to replace a boiler or whatever. And I have budgeted in there for the sheriff's vehicle again. I upped that a little bit. Um, you know, they go in there the deer. <laughs> I still like that so funny. <laughs> anyway, but that would remain the same, three hundred fourteen thousand. Um, the tech fund, I left it the same. We pretty well, you know, run pretty close on all these. I could probably cut some in that tech fund if I wanted to. You know, we can play with that maybe. Um, what I, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm late. No, go ahead. Indigent barrel expense. What, what, what's the qualifications? Remember, there was, you know, there was a. The line of instant, instant. We had to add this to the budget two years ago because. Forty three twenty nine. Because um, there was some legislation oh, passed, yeah. I believe, that we had if someone is determined to be indigent. The county has to bury them. And by indigent, no family, no money, no nothing. So, um, and I mean, knock on wood, luckily we have never had to do that, but we, we put that in there just in case okay. we could. I mean, they find somebody dead beside the road with no ID or anything, we have to bury them. There have been a few people try it. Um, yeah. Some folks in the restaurant tried it. And it was found that they had family in Martin, which just didn't yeah. want to pay. So, but, I mean, we, we, I think we need that in there just in case. All right. And then what about uh, dead animals? 
we don't fuzz it for dead end. So that would be a zero But you don't fuzz it for dead end. Like, like a horse. Remember a couple years ago we had a horse that was. I think that just came out and, of Cost five hundred dollars to find a place and take a whole We've never, we've never had that county So that just comes out of the sheriff's budget. I believe. Okay. Well, I mean, you hear more and more that people can't afford, you know, feed their animals, and they just let them loose and uh, you know, hit on the highway. And Do you want me to? Well, I just, put I that just, in the general budget. Uh, I'm just curious to where if if it were to happen. Do you remember when that two or three years ago that we had one? Yeah, we had to I'm fairly of. certain Jeff paid that out of there. Because you had that stray livestock fund or something at that time, and um, I'm thinking that's where that came out. Okay. When he has to feed stray cats and stuff, it comes back. But I don't know if he has that funding. Actually, not. So, that might be something we need to remind the sheriff to include in his. Or wherever, it doesn't matter, it's all county general. Anyway, okay. Employee benefits. I left the same. Just filled with some of the numbers. Um, unemployment has gone up for us drastically. We've had some claims, of course. Work comp is going up again. Papers is county portion is going up. So, but I've left it the same. Mm -hmm. We haven't had any huge major health claims, so mm -hmm. I think we'll be all right so far on our health insurance. And then I went ahead and did the janitor budget. I don't know what he's coming back. I can't get an answer out of it on when he's coming back. So I just left it to say. Reserve funds. Right. The fire has theirs. 
Dr. Sweet has his solid waste doesn't have one. I mean, he could use it. Right. It's just that it's, it's not, nobody's going to abuse it. Look, we say now. Well, we're not as long, long as you guys watch it. Well, I know. Other departments have it. Right. It's just mm -hmm. By statute, theirs are created. Yes. But there's not one for the clerk's office to have a reserve fund. You know, this is kind of a blanket for any other fund that doesn't have their own reserve fund. Right. You know, you don't have to sign that. Can we do that quick, break? Yeah. A little recess. Come <laughs> Um, Our holidays, right? You know, and it didn't really start until Sunday. Here's a copy of the letter from Bill reference uh, Mr. Keenan. Oh, yeah. He has a group last week and we're going to look at it for something out. So. <laughs> Some of the year that we have is brand new. Some of the guys just, I mean, don't make the, make the fires like they would like to. And some of it is used, used to torn. Yeah, I think I'm on my second or third pair of pants already. I don't know, it's, it's 2000. Yeah. Because all the year we have is from that orange brand that we got in the most seconds. I think so. Part of it, which was minimal, but all this gear, if we wait till the shelf, shelf life is all going to come here at the same time, we're talking about $43,000. So, wow. so, we're trying, so to, we're trying to do trying to stack as we need a little bit. We've actually cut the numbers down because at the time they had 100 cents a year. Cents a year we cover that out of our fire department. I think we're still to about 65 to 70 yeah, days. That was the last time we had 30 of them. Like showing that we're on there in like two thousand dollars a piece for the year. Actually, but they were on the internet. But they were but they were on the internet. a lot of different things, so we cut all that out. Try to. And we're getting ready to visit 
that again here pretty quick. We'll have our uh, next month we'll have our second annual meeting at FRA. So uh, we will visit with the station chiefs and chiefs will come up with a list of people that are not responding to meetings or runs and if it does not meet our requirements, then they'll get a nice little letter from us. And if that doesn't help, then they'll be help. We will not renew their insurance policy after the first year. So, it could be that way, but I'm not going to pay an insurance policies on personnel and annuities on personnel that are not going to show up to the job. So, do we need a motion on this to? Transfer the funds from what was it? Fire reserve. Fire reserve fund. Fire reserve fund. I'll make the motion that we allow the transfer of, of uh, twelve thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars to be transferred from the fire reserve fund to the purchase. Make the purchase. To make the purchase. Well, you don't have to transfer. No, they can just make the purchase. The purchase will be paid out. We'll give it. We'll give it the okie dokie. <laughs> uh, second that. Okay, we have a motion a second to purchase the uh, <laughs> fire equipment from the fire reserve fund. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. This is the uh, actually the newest stuff and is actually the same price as the stuff that we bought before. Before this is the newest and lighter weight material. So we're getting I think actually said we're getting quoted a sell price. For yeah, we're getting a pretty good deal on it. The fire reserve fund is ten dollars cheaper. Percent. So we here we go. <laughs> it didn't transfer all the one page like I wanted to, but oh, have to have to go to the second page. Yeah, because this, <laughs> this was. This here was the, the last item you guys on was kind of custom discussed quite a bit where we want to put that in. We, we were discussing that. Nice is 
Barton County does have an army in our top group. So when we have Randall County's frequencies, we obviously get Barton County's and Edwards County's. We're in the process of getting them. So it's nice for him and I because we have that in our patrol vehicles, but everybody else in the dark. It's kind of like a, the radio. We have our standard radios, and I'm not sure that's the one unit out of every station has the high band. Yeah. We have UHF, UHF, just one unit does. And it's more like kind of the command vehicle yeah. of every station, but it's a fire truck. If we had the hundreds of that, we'd be able to have, able to have frequencies with about anybody around. Mm -hmm. That means that we are getting these newer, better trucks, and people like the like first to come out and play because we can get a lot more places to look at some of the local trucks now. I was down at the Iuka Fire Department Monday. They got an old four street truck sitting there, and of course, they've got another uh, pickup with a flame job on the hood. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ellenwood just got a brand new five ton. They acquired it from Forester Service, and I talked to the chief. I actually went through Ellenwood the other day, and very, very pretty truck. They probably, they probably spent more on the paint job than what we did on the uh, whole right. labor of parts. Porsche trucks are great as long as they're not. But it's half week of the day. Yeah. 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 So, 
right, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Until next time. Off the whip stuff. It's a lunch. It's a luncheon meeting today. Yeah. Yeah. Sleep once you get there. Uh huh. Yeah. We have to go back to search lunch for meeting. Yeah. It's been a long day. The impoundment. The shots for the boys. The impoundment. Aaron does. We took a guy out of a shelter belt last night that was oh, hiding. No. Was hiding. So, yeah. <laughs> oh. He's probably got it too. <laughs> he was actually laying, trying to crawl through it. Oh. To oh. Hide it. So, he uh, decided he didn't want to play with the puppy dog, and a nice canine officer from Pawnee County had a hand built a litter in it. And said, Yep, he's right there. Oh, wow. Doesn't pay to be a thief. Doesn't pay to be a thief. It pay to be a heavy set. He didn't run very far. <laughs> he was telling me to smoke. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I looked at him like, seriously? <laughs> he made me look small, that's for sure. So. <laughs> he was taking out the poison ivy a little bit, or was he? He was trying to dig a hole. I mean, he was oh dead. my god. Yeah. Well, well, was smart. Right. Not good. Uh -huh. All right, guys, thank you. Thank you. That's really Checking what it's all about to transport him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go get the transport, so that's the best thing in the world. <laughs> Anything else? I don't have that one. Anything else, please?